So welcome, listeners, and thank you very much for joining myself, Sonia Clark. I have a lovely guest to introduce you to. Uh, she is an expert with everything that comes to video in particular that will really help you uh, for your personal life, but certainly for your professional life and your business. So Holly Gillian. Oh, and I've said it again. I did. Holly <laughs> Gillian. <laughs> welcome, Holly. Thank you so much for having me on today, Sonia. I can't wait to talk to your audience. Oh, lovely. Thank you so much for joining us. So let me tell you, listeners, about Holly Gillen. She uh, helps high-performing female business owners, so entrepreneurs in particular, on both sides of the camera by helping to teach them and give, give you skills in and around creating not just a, a fabulous video, but business cinema so Holly, please explain to us what business cinema is all about. Certainly. Business cinema is the way that I like to describe the next level video. So it's video with a plan, purpose, system, and strategy, not just creating video for the sake of creating video, but creating videos that actually help move your business forward. So videos reverse engineered that have a strategy behind them, systems to get it done quick, and a purpose so you know why you're doing it. Mm, lovely. That sounds really, really fabulous. And that certainly sounds very strategic for a lot of uh, business owners and how it can help them really. Let me just do a little bit more of an introduction about you, Holly, to our listeners. So Holly G is the go-to video gal. And look, she's worked with uh, people like and I can't quite read my scrawly writing here, people, so I'm popping on my glasses. <laughs> this uh, Sunday channel, Sony Music, Nick.com, HBO, Bono, Big Time Rush, Forrest Whitaker, and many, many more. So, Holly, you've really got quite a lovely experience. Could you give the, the listeners here a little bit of context and uh, a bit about your story? Sure. So I started working professionally in the film industry back in 2008, and I freelanced as a camera operator, uh, producer, and editor. I had the opportunity to work on some truly amazing projects and with some really awesome people, and I spent years working um, all around the city, and when I decided I started to see like in 2010 I started to see and notice like a rise of online video and YouTube and I was like hey you know I could totally be helping people make videos for their websites and for YouTube so I started a production company and I was working with people and I realized that everybody had the same questions and concerns when it came to video which was I want to make video but I'm not ready to be on camera <laughs> I want to make video but I have no idea what kind of videos I want to make and I want to make video, but I don't have a budget for it, <laughs> mm. which hinders the production company side of things and the doing it for people, creating that video content for people. So I was like, okay, let me, I'm going to pivot a little bit. And I started another company called the Media Prep Group, which is all about preparing business owners to present themselves and their businesses on camera and in the media to kind of help people get more comfortable with being in front of the camera. Because if they wanted to be the representative of their brand through video, then they definitely needed to learn how to be comfortable and feel natural and express themselves in front of the camera. And I was doing live events and I was like, you know, this is still, there's still something a little off about this. I'm going to pivot again. And I transitioned everything to an online business in 2013 when I started this business and I translated all of this, my skills and experience into helping online business owners create vi videos for their businesses, for their online courses, behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, uh, video content marketing, using the skills that I had working professionally. Yeah, yeah, which is, um, you know, it, video has certainly taken a lot uh, with the way that we used to do things and, and certainly has you know, evolved a lot more to, to help with uh, business. But I particularly liked how you touched on that um, it certainly is around branding. I'm, I'm still finding, and certainly at the moment this year, <clears throat> 
excuse me, this particular year where a lot of people are uh, having to be a whole lot more virtual and do uh, lots of different types of uh, their businesses, uh, their services, whether they have been doing it, but they're really up in the ante in this virtual world, or whether they're actually doing something that typically wasn't virtual and they're now having to do it virtual it's still not only around the usage of video for that service and still coming off and being professional, but, uh, you know, it still strikes me that there's a lot of people that don't realise the, the relevancy of uh, branding. You know, it's looking the same, sounding the same, you know, as far as um, and, and getting that message come across. There's really quite a few components. And I suppose that's, why a lot of people get a little bit turned off uh, because you can do a deep dive into it. <laughs> so, uh, look, let, let, there's quite a few questions I'm sure is burning on lots of people's minds here at the moment. So let's start off with a little bit of the basics. Take us on a journey, Holly. <laughs> what would be your Absolutely. recommendations? Recommendations for getting started. Well, first things first is I always tell people if you don't know the answers to these four questions, put your camera down and walk away. And they are why, who, what, and how. These are the four pillars of pre-production. And if you can't answer them, then you need to rethink your, your video strategy. So first with like, why? Why are you making video? Why is it important to you? Why is it important to your business? Why should anybody care? Why are people gonna watch? How does it fit in to the bigger picture of what you're doing with the other aspects of your business? And you know, how, how do you want to incorporate it? So understanding that is going to you know, really set you up for success. Mm -hmm. So then you know that you're not just driving aimlessly in the car with no destination. You, you know where you're going and you're starting to kind of formulate a plan on how to get there. Yeah. Next with um, who, who is your audience? Because you do want to make sure that you're crafting your content specifically for the person who's going to be watching. So understanding who your ideal client is and what their burning questions are, what are their concerns, what are their desires, what are their questions that you know keep them up at night. And you want to make sure you're crafting your content around that and reverse engineering it based on the things that you have for sale. Mm -hmm. So understanding who that person is, what they want, how you can help them, and then talking to them by meeting them where they are. Because you're the expert, right? You know so much. But being able to talk to your audience where they are so that you can take them to the next level. So knowing who they, they are, super, super important. Mm -hmm. Next up is what. So what is that content that you're going to be creating for your audience? What type of content? Do you want to, what, what platforms do you want to use? How do you want to come across to your audience? And last but not least is how, because if you know why, who, and what, but you haven't thought about how you're actually going to get it done, what's going to happen is you're going to stay stuck in procrastination station, as I like to call it, just in the planning mode. And you're just going to procrastinate plan and procrastinate plan. And like video is always going to be at the top of your to-do list or maybe at the bottom of your to-do list, but it's never going to get off of your to-do list. Mm. And you're never going to actually start to take action because in your mind, you haven't figured out how it's actually all going to come to fruition. And there's a lot of moving parts. So you really need to have a full understanding of what equipment you, you have, what do you need? How can you, how do you use it? How much time do you have? Like what's your time budget? Are you going to hire parts of the process out? And if you are, how are you going to make that happen? And, you know, really thinking through that part of it. Mm. So that's where, that's where I recommend everybody start. <laughs> mm. Mm. How about, what do you, what's your uh, feelings around the where? Because, uh, you know, the, the where a lot of people, you know, do they have something set up and staged like I do in this, just this room here. Um, uh, some people go into the full hog and make it all very, very sound, um, you know, proofed. Uh, and then other people that are very uh, sort of more raw and out and about, out in, well, you know, when they were getting out about a little bit more yes. and go for walks outside and things like that. What would be some of your um, ideas and, and tips around that? So with set design, if you're going to be inside, you know, first and foremost, I recommend experimenting, right? So that you could determine which locations in your house are going to be the best locations to shoot um, based on lighting and sound quality and 
you know, what the look that you're going for is. Mm -hmm. So maybe you want more casual look. So maybe you want to shoot in your living room or maybe you want something a little bit more professional. So maybe you rent out a space and you deck that out how you want it set up. You know, it really just depends on the look that you're going for. But generally speaking, if you want to just try, try to keep it simple, you want to make sure that everything is, that's in the frame is there for a reason and is not to your brand. And it is, it's, it's almost like you're supporting character. So it's doing speaking for you without you having to say something, right? You know, what's, hey, what's hanging out behind you is gonna tell the viewer a little bit more about your story, a little bit more about your background. So you really wanna be very um, cognizant of what's happening behind you. Make sure there's like nothing growing out of the top of your head or like random things sticking into the frame that shouldn't be there, you know, because this is going to lend to the story. So. Yeah. keeping it simple and making it um, on point with your brand. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very true. And look, we don't always, uh, uh, you know, uh, seeing it from that sort of that, that frame, like you said, that, that frame point of view. And I remember interviewing uh, one entrepreneur once who's like, Oh my gosh, I've just realized you can see the washing behind me. This is why we're chatting. And she goes, I can't really uh, sort of, uh, she, she said, I've just got to get my head in the right angle because I can't go out and move it. And, and I want you to see my knickers and my brain. <laughs> I'll give you feedback. Are you ready now? A little bit more to your level. <laughs> it's those sorts of things that, you know, when we're involving personal life and professional life, it's always those times that are smashing together. <laughs> which so, is, that but, brings up another point, actually, which yeah. is why I recommend batching your content. Because if you don't have like a dedicated studio space, something mm -hmm. that where your equipment and everything is kind of set up all the time and it's only your studio and that's only where you shoot and nothing else is happening in that space, then you, it's fine. It's, that's fine because you, but you still want to batch, right? And, but if you mm. don't have that, you want to make sure that you're planning to record a bunch of videos at the same time, getting everything kind of set up so that you're not wasting the opportunity that you have with your studio set up by having to set it up and take it down and set it up and take it down. Mm, mm, and maybe clean clean all the stuff behind it because you know sometimes we're running a little tight on time <laughs> <laughs> true true <laughs> i um i often forget to dust this this uh <laughs> the um behind me the bookcase and i'm like and it's and it's black i'd like to cut paint it white but it's it's black and every now and then it's like oh can you see dust no phew, good keep going <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, so, so maybe some other uh, tips around um, feeling foreign and whether a little bit of imposter syndrome sort of tends to creep in or just feeling comfortable about looking at the camera. Generally speaking, you know, one of the things I, I use quotes <laughs> around like looking natural, that's usually one of the things that comes up all the time. Like, how do I look natural on camera? You know, and how do I overcome this awkward feeling that I get every time I want to try to make a video and I'm staring into this inanimate object? I actually transitioned from that place to where I am now, even even though I have a professional background, like I was used to being behind the camera. I, I was behind the scenes. I was working behind the camera and I didn't necessarily ever have to get in front of the camera. So when I started my business and I was like, okay, I'm going to be the face and voice of my business and I'm going to have to transition to the front of the camera. I was like, this is going to be easy. I'm a total professional. I know what I'm doing. It wasn't easy. And I was like having some sort of out of body experience where I was like, uh, same thing, like imposter syndrome, like somebody who knows more than me is going to see this and think I'm an idiot. And like, what, who am I? And how dare I talk about these things? And, um, you know, all of those thoughts came flooding into my mind and like talking and saying to myself, Oh, you totally forgot what you were going to say next. And just all of those things happened. I started feeling super nervous, uncomfortable. I had all butterflies. I was sweating. I'm like, why am I sweating? Um, and I, through this process of this going, you know, happening, I decided that this was my power. This was something that was going to be positive for me and not something that was going to be negative. And I turned it into, this is me growing from the inside out. This feeling that I'm feeling, this nerves, uncomfortableness. This is an opportunity for me to learn something new, to do something I've never done before and is giving me a chance to grow and 
giving me the opportunity to share what I know. Mm. So when I started to shift the focus with, in combination with, this is my power, this is me growing, and then shifting the focus off of myself. So stopping the thoughts of who am I, imposter syndrome, perfection, blah, 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 and start thinking about like, who's going to be watching this video on the other side and how are they going to be so happy when they hear this information because they've been searching for, for it all over and, and here they are now listening to me share this information with them. Um, those two things in combination mm -hmm. and practicing will allow you to look and feel more natural in front of the camera. It's just, I joke around and say, everybody has to make their first 100 terrible videos. <laughs> and it's kind of a joke, but it's kind of not a joke. <laughs> not a turn. <laughs> yes. it, it is because it's just like, <clears throat> it's just like anything else that you, you start. You're, you're not going to be like the master the second you pick it up. Like I'm not going to just, turn myself into a professional swimmer overnight. I have to practice. I have to get in the pool. Maybe I don't want to, maybe I don't want to put bathing suit on. Maybe it's cold. You know, I have to overcome these things and get in the pool, do the work. And then that's how that happens. Same thing with video. Lovely analogy. Lovely analogy. <clears throat> I really, really like that. You know, um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. One of the, the things I sort of had, quite a bit of difficulty with too is that I, I've done many, many years of stage work. And so there's that overperforming, there's that um, uh, cheesiness and things yeah. like that. And then, then being in front of a camera, it, it really does pick up a lot of things and it's not your natural self, especially if it's in the small uh, little bite size chunks. So, and, and I certainly get the whole, um, you know, it, it certainly helps to practice and practice to, to get to be that swimmer at least. Uh, but what happens when for people, what would you recommend then if they're, and for someone like me, if it's really having to be in small bite-sized chunks, you don't really get that mojo happening. You don't get into the rhythm of the, you know, the, the pace and swimming in the pool. <laughs> when you say uh, small bite-sized chunks, you mean like recording in small bite-sized chunks? Yes, or? yes, yes, recording. So typically I'm all for pre-production. Pre-production will allow you to feel more confident in your material so that you're not having to um, record in you know, those, those choppy chunks, mm -hmm. right? So usually what I recommend people do is before you ever even hit record on your camera, you know, you, you want to make sure that you're prepared with the content and that will allow you to flow more naturally and mm -hmm. more conversationally. And it will um, come together a little bit better and be easy to edit because it, you, you've kind of made a plan. This is, I'm going to talk about A, B, C, D, and then put it all together and we're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Preparation, preparation, preparation. <laughs> it, planning and pre-production is 60 to 65% of the process. So mm. going back to those four pillars of pre-production, knowing your who, what, why, how, mm -hmm. um, then crafting your content accordingly. So writing scripts, bullet points, jotting down some notes and batching that together so that you're recording a bunch of videos at the same time. So that if you do are in a situation where your set is something that you have to set up every time you record, you don't want to waste that opportunity by just setting it up and recording the one video, but recording a bunch of videos at the mm. same time. So mm. usually we recommend people record like a month's worth of videos at a time. Mm, that's good. That's very good. A month's worth. So then really the, the, uh, the preparation for that, um, is, would be quite a bit really then on the, the day that you're doing the batching and the month's worth, then it's, there's really quite a lot, um, to, to go through. So there would be that a huge amount of preparation really prior. Not necessarily. It depends on the frequency in which you're producing content. Okay. So if you're producing a video a week, that's only four videos. So let's say the four videos, three minutes a piece, that's 12 minutes worth of video. Yep. Um, and prior to you getting started. So I like to do, you know, pre-production week where you spend a few hours kind of fleshing out those ideas. So let's say, for example, June is coming up. So June, what do I want to talk about in June? 
um, what's happening in June, what's happening in my business, what's happening, you know, kind of topically, is there anything related to my industry that maybe there's special industry events or things that um, lend themselves to my business in the month of June. So summer's coming, maybe I, you know, want to talk about summer, the, the, the weather and this, you know, how that can be incorporated into the things that I'm discussing in my business. And I want to also think about what am I doing in my business? What am I launching? What do I have for sale? What mm. am I giving away? What's going on? Mm. What's going on in the month next, you know, in July, what's going, what's happening in July? Do I, cause I want to kind of pre-frame anything that maybe is coming down the pipe. Like I'm going to be launching something in July and I want to make sure that the content I'm creating in June is kind of setting the tone for what's coming in July. Right. So just spending a few minutes fleshing that out and understanding, you know, what's going on on your calendar. And then let's say I want to make a video in July all about, you know, scripting your videos. So I'm going to sit down and I'm going to, you know, jot down my ideas around that. And then maybe the next part is I'm going to talk about how to plan and record that video. So I'm going to, you know, jot down some notes about that. And, you know, within a few hours, I have four scripts planned out some notes. I have a vision. I have reverse engineered my content. I know why I'm creating it. Maybe I've done some keyword research. So then I understand, you know, how um, I'm going to optimize the videos once I upload them and, you know, flesh that out. And then the following week, I'm going to record those videos. Mm -hmm. mm, There's quite a few little nuggets of gold in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very good. Very Thank good. you. <clears throat> and again, it's that whole being strategic in and around that and, and how to leverage as much as possible your uh, business strategies, your marketing plans, all of those sorts of things. So um, one of the things as you were talking, I'm thinking, okay, with scripting, uh, how about the people that are the perfectionists and then aren't really presenting or talking about it the way that they perhaps have scripted it out. Some people, I because I've heard people, some people say they don't like scripts, other people that they do like scripts. What would be some of your tips around that? First and foremost, figure out like which, what you prefer. It's like when I first started, I wanted to write full scripts and I was that perfectionist. That was me. <laughs> I was like, every word of every video has to be perfect. <laughs> I was like, otherwise people are going to be like, who is this video person? Their videos are awful. Um, no pressure. Right. So <laughs> what ended up happening was I came to the realization that nobody's perfect nobody can relate to perfection. And the more I tried that, the more it didn't work. And this became glaringly obvious to me when I met somebody who had been watching my videos in person. She had been watched, she watched all my videos. She was like my biggest fan. I met her and she says to me, can I tell you something? And I'm like, sure. Like, what are you gonna tell me? She leans in and she says, I didn't think I was gonna, you know, like I didn't realize how funny you were. She's like, that does not come across in your videos at all. I okay. I was trying to be too scripted, too buttoned up, too perfect. Yeah. And what was happening was that was diminishing, you know, my personality. And mm. at the end of the day, nobody can relate to perfection. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's expecting you to be perfect. And when you are perfect, you might turn people off, like, because you just become unrelatable. Mm. So, you know, don't, don't feel like you need to be perfect in every video because you will become unrelatable and you won't be able to get your message across to the people who need to hear it the most. Yeah. Oh gosh. That's uh, that's like, so drop the mic thing. <laughs> so, pivotal, so pivotal. Because when we, we're really talking about a lot more these days with authenticity and transparency and ultimately that is it's your personality and you really want your personality to come across i mean everyone's personalities are different so I'm not going to have everyone like us uh you know, that's but it's totally okay that's actually more than okay and you don't want to be too vanilla you know you do mm. want your personality to shine through and you get the ability to allow more of your personality to shine through when you get more comfortable in front of the camera. And again, mm -hmm. that goes back to, to practicing and, you know, really kind of working out all of the kinks. So then more of your natural personality just starts to kind of come out and circling back to the scripting. So for some people, 
writing a full script will work. And then you just kind of, you don't have to memorize it, but you know, you just have it on the side just to kind of make you feel a little bit more confident with the material that you're, you're sharing. Or what I do now is I literally write like, like four points. Like that's my, you know, that's what all I need to keep me on track in the video. The key is you want to have some sort of an idea and have some sort of a plan in place. You can, you know, um, kind of riff, but you need to be able to riff with a purpose so that you're not riffing off into never, never land. And now it's 20 minutes later and people's gone gray hairs grown out and nobody's watching, nobody's watching anymore. So, you know, you really want to make sure that you are planning and scripting so that you stay succinct and you're, you know, I'm all about hashtag F the fluff. Everybody's busy. I don't want to waste your time because I don't have time to waste either. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So true. Uh, that, which makes me think also then, well, you know, some people have said, Oh, look, you know, you've got only X amount of seconds or to, to capture someone's attention and you'll only ever have them for X amount of minutes uh, and that's it. So what would be your opinions around that? Um, you, I, I always recommend, I teach a script formula called thriller, filler, spiller. Um, and basically it is, you want to immediately thrill, captivate, engage, um, spark some sort of curiosity in the viewer straight from the beginning um, to, and also kind of promise like what's gonna happen in the video. Like I tell you, I have zero patience for people's videos who start out with, hi, I'm Susie from such and such Susie company. And I am the best at what I do and flash to, 20 second long self-indulgent intro. Like I'm gone. I am on YouTube looking for an answer, a quick answer to a question, a burning question that I might have, or I want to be entertained. So that whole self, you know, indulgent long intro that you think you need to make because so-and-so has a nice intro is garbage. Don't do that. Um, especially if you're just getting started, you want to immediately deliver. You want to immediately make an impression. You want to immediately Thrill the viewer, which is why I call it thriller. Next is the filler, which is the content that you've planned ahead of time. And then the spiller, which is your call to action. Now that you've built up a sense of reciprocity with the value that you delivered in such an amazing fashion, hashtag F the fluff, people are like, yes, that's my answer. And I didn't have to watch a 10 minute long video of somebody rambling to get it. Um, now, what would you, you want to give me more stuff? Okay. So you can have your call to action be anything from like this video, share this video, come on over to my website, get more information about this content that I'm sharing here, you know, with like a content upgrade and an opt in mm. that people can opt in for. So that goes back again to the strategy and the pre-production and the planning. So mm. during that planning phase where you're, you know, jotting down the ideas and, you know, thinking about how this fits into the bigger picture you may want to be thinking about like, what is something extra I can add? And do I want to add something extra to this particular video on the spiller side of the content? Mm, mm, gosh, lovely. And I was just thinking too, when you were talking about uh, call to action, how many call to actions do you think someone would, you know, really need to, to give? Would it be repeat the call to action a couple of times or could they give a, a say two or three different types of call to actions in a video? Depends on if you're doing live video or pre-recorded video, right? Live video, you definitely want to be repeating yourself throughout the, the video because there's people coming and going. And um, so you want to make sure that that information is available for people while they're on and that it's repeated often in case there are somebody who's just popped in. Right. Yep. With um, a pre-recorded video, I don't recommend having like a bunch of different uh, calls to action, you know, really kind of keying in on a couple, you know, one to two things that you, you would like to ask people to do. I, I also like to give like engagement calls to action throughout the video. So let's say I'm talking about something and I say, oh, well, what do you think about that? Let me know in the comments below. Um, what this does is it helps the viewer get more engaged in the content and in what in being a part of the conversation, even though the video isn't live, where live video is more like a conversation, you know, allows them to feel like they're a part of that conversation by asking them and having them fill in 
the information in the comments and then it also sets off the algorithm by like let's say for example the videos on youtube and youtube's like oh people are commenting on this video well people must like it and we're going to push it up in you know the search rank so that more people can see this and more people can benefit from this mm, mm, very good very good yeah i think um <clears throat> from and I, I so agree when i've watched lots of people they don't always encourage the uh the engagement part of it and uh when you're being strategic like you've suggested you know for the optimization with the, the ranking and, and for all of those there's you know there's quite a few parts that really should be a part of every video so that you're leveraging and optimizing as much as you possibly can <laughs> you, you never know when that video might take off youtube is a is a strange animal. For example, with the state of affairs that's currently happening. So currently we're, you know, in a global pandemic and people are, you know, sequestered into their homes. Mm -hmm. And my videos on my YouTube channel have completely taken off. Um, I think last week I had a 330% increase in wow. views on my channel specifically with a couple of key videos. And these videos were made years ago and they have to do with live video and um you know going live and things that are related to live video production yeah. specifically with yeah. facebook yeah. um so those videos were were like completely taking off like hundreds of you know thousands of video views over the last couple of weeks and so you never know <laughs> when something like that is going to happen in one of your older videos so you know you yeah. always want to be very purposeful and keep that in mind that this is evergreen content this content is not you know, here today, gone tomorrow, this content will live on for years on your channel. So, you know, being very mindful of that and strategic with the information that you share. Mm, mm. Oh, look, I'm sure there's a lot of people listening going, oh my gosh, you have to teach me, Holly, you have to teach me. <laughs> so we're, we're definitely going to have to make sure that we provide uh, all of the details there so that um, the listeners can go forward and, and follow you up a lot more there. So before we sort of move on with some of the things that you've talked about and uh, with some of the, th the questions that I've asked, is there any further additional tips that you would like to provide? I think for your audience, one of the things that I actually always say all the time is remember you are someone's reason to smile so don't give up i know sometimes it can feel very frustrating and overwhelming with all of the things going on but don't forget that you are here to change lives and people are waiting for you mm -hmm. and this this goes back to actually something i wanted to touch upon again with the personality and having your personality come through there may be hundreds of thousands or dozens and people who do what you do, right? But nobody will do it quite like you do it. And that really is the power of video because it allows you to showcase your personality, your perspective, which is why I went back and said that you don't want to ride the line. You don't want to be vanilla. You don't want to be opinionless because that's, you don't want to be everything to everyone. You want to have opinions. You want to have viewpoints. You, you want to allow your personality to shine through because somebody needs to hear something that you have to say specifically from you. Cause I can't tell you how many times I've heard somebody say, Oh, do do this. And you're like, yeah, 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 whatever. Do this. And you're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Then you see that one person one day, my husband always joked around because I always come back to him and I'm like, do you know this, this, and this? He's like, yeah, I told you like three months ago. <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to say that. Hold on. That's what I always do with <laughs> <laughs> it might just be a husband thing, but people. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> what is with that? <laughs> you know, I don't know, but it's funny. It's a funny phenomenon. So I was like, oh, okay, yeah, but now I get it because I heard it from this lady who explained it to me the way that I needed to hear it. You yeah. were talking in a way that didn't, it didn't quite hit me the way that it needed to hit me because it was from this woman that I needed to hear it. And I liked the way that she said it and the way that she explained it. And it's yeah. also, you know, you're, you're hitting people at different points in their journey, right? So mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. I may be more open to hearing an idea than other times. So, mm -hmm. you know, you just never know. Somebody's yeah. waiting for you. Yeah. I like that. And you don't, and ultimately you don't have to be someone for everyone. It's, it's exactly. very much about, yeah, about being, you don't want it. You want to be the opposite of that. You yeah. want to be, you know, um, 
just very mindful that you don't have to be everything to everybody and you don't want to attract the wrong people either you want to attract people who like you for you know who you are and if you're trying to be all these things and no one really knows who you are you're going to be attracting all these people and you're going to be like oh why am i working with this person <laughs> <laughs> they don't they don't get me yeah yeah and that's the that's the ultimate thing you know if we're working for ourselves and we're in our own businesses we really want to be the architect of of what that business is and, and not create monsters or cause I've done that in the past. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and want to have that life that we really ultimately, that's why we're doing it. <laughs> and you I want mean, it to be fun and yeah. easy and breezy. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I often used to say to my mum all the time, it was one of my mottos, find the joy, find the joy. But yeah, you want to just have fun. You want to, and, 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 you know, muck around with, look, everyone's different. But I, I think people, you know, information will stick with them if they have a bit more joy and fun with it. So tell us, Holly, then what is on the horizon for you in 2020? Sure. So <laughs> besides being stuck in the house right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually, um, I am, I have a, a free video challenge that I'm going to be running in May. And it is basically what I went through when I was locked in my office studio, as I like to call it, making video after video after video, because I was sweating and nervous and uncomfortable. And I was like, I have to do this. I have to do this. So I'm just going to keep making videos. So that, um, that happened. And I was like, this is, it turned into this challenge and I've run it since 2014, 2013, I think I ran my wow, first one. Okay. 2014, January, 2014. I've had hundreds of people go through this. I have people who come back to me and say this years later, still like this challenge changed my life. This challenge gave me confidence, not only with video, but also with just my life and who I am as a person. And it's like completely transformative. And it's something I absolutely love doing. And I love watching people go through. It's called From Star to Star. And it's a 15 day free video challenge. And every day I give you a video prompt. And every day you show up and you make a video. And I guarantee you, by the time you get to the end, you're not going to recognize yourself. Wow. For 15 days, did you say? 15 mm. days, one five. Yep. 15 days for 15 minutes. 15 days, you make a video every day. The video is yep. three minutes or less. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Right. You can devote 15 minutes a day. That's all it yeah. takes to make a video. Wow. You know, the, yeah. Cause it, it's like, um, it's like a compounding interest really, isn't it? That it would really help a great deal of people. That sounds exactly. really amazing. And it's you know, so fun too. It's so fun. It's super fun. Oh, cool. You know, while you were talking, I had a little bit of a, a quick thing. I get these things pop into my head every now and then. I thought, oh, wouldn't it be interesting to see, you know, the the, the people that have put done this as, as far as seeing their journey, but even for you to perhaps collect a whole lot of people and do a collage of people's journeys and, and the fun bloopers and things like that um, would be very interesting. It's almost like, you know, being a fly on the wall with in people's heads in a way. <laughs> well, you can go and take a look. I actually have, I have probably 50 plus video testimonials from people who've gone through yep. the experience and you get to see them fresh from the end and they talk about their journeys going Lovely. through the process. I, I think that would be very interesting. It's, it's looking at the lessons learned and especially if it's a video testimony, it's the lessons learned, you know, when we're, when we're looking at trying to upskill ourselves and to continually improve, lessons come in all sorts of formats uh, mm -hmm. as far as our learning journey. So it's not just a course, but listening to someone as far as what they've learned um, and certainly in a, in a video testimony, I think that would be really quite awesome. I think um, a lot of people wouldn't um, appreciate that. And I'm, I'm certainly going to go in and check it out too. <laughs> yep. So uh, you have an offer for the listeners? So well, the offer is I have also, if one of the other, so let me regroup myself. <laughs> one of the, I got excited. I got excited. <laughs> um, one of the other things that comes up all the time is ideas. Like people don't know what to talk about. They're not quite sure. Like, what do I say? How much do I say? What do I, you know, 
how do I come up with the ideas? So I put yeah. together an idea workbook and it helps you flesh out your ideas and gives you tons and tons of different ideas based on specific dates, based on monthly events and just general topics, themes and ideas for every month of 2020. Mm. And people can um, go ahead and check that out. Lovely. That sounds really fabulous. So listeners, I've got that URL on the website here, my website, so they can go in and check that out and, and go through and follow that up with Holly. So that sounds really awesome. And uh, to check out her challenge and uh, get involved. <laughs> I think that sounds really good. I think, you know, even if you've had a lot of practice in front of a, a video, there's you know, I think we as people, we evolve, our business evolves, our mindset, where we're at. And I think it's always really good to do brush ups regularly with it too. So I think it would be good to get involved in that challenge. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. One, of, one of the things that actually is really awesome about the challenge is that you can come in at any, any level. So whether you have made zero videos or you've made 300 videos, you, there's still something that you can get out of the experience. Mm, lovely. And I suppose considering that, you know, trends at the moment are changing too. So I think it's a good idea to come in also with that and look at how, how do I also use this? Holly, help me. <laughs> yeah. Help me, Holly G. No problem. <laughs> I like that. So Holly G, the go-to girl <laughs> with uh, Holly G Studios. Um, all right. So before we uh, sign off, I'm going to ask you again one just last quick thing. Is there any things that are still on the, the tip of your tongue that you do or, or wanting to say? Just remind people that you are someone's reason to smile. So don't give up. Oh, I love that. I love that. I reckon that should be written and, and put up on people's walls. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely, lovely little quote from you. <laughs> Look, I thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, your insights, your tips. It's, it's been, uh, you know, fabulous as far as pearls of wisdoms and nuggets of gold, but also uh, for the time that you've uh, dedicated here and to inspire us all. So yeah, thank you uh, greatly for that. And I'm sure all of the listeners are going to be very grateful too. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, it's great having you and maybe another time. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, thank you. And we'll sign off. Bye-bye everyone. <laughs>